Hello everyone, and welcome to Fiction Fusion, so we're back with an interesting and brand new movie on what if Naruto had the powers of Otsutsuki Kagaya become powerful Saiyan. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content. Let's start the story. A blonde-haired 16-year-old boy could be seen dashing towards a man with long shaggy silver hair, and two glowing purple eyes with three black rings surrounding a round pupil. The man was dressed in a white cloak, with black collar, black comma-shaped mark just under said collar. On his forehead was a white metal headband with two horns. In his right hand was a solid black staff that ended as a half-moon. Surrounding this man were floating black balls. This man is the legendary revived Uchiha Madara who with the use of his pawn Uchiha Obito gained the supposed power of all nine-tailed beast, the eyes of the legendary sage of six paths, and came back to life. The boy dashing towards him had spiky blonde hair, that had slight edges of white or silver. His eyes were red with commas in the shape of a six-sides shuriken. His pupil was a slit, and spinning. This boy was dressed in a black cloak, with a red collar. Under said collar was fourteen red commas. From each of his ears red sun-shaped earrings hung. On each side of this boy's face were three whisker marks. On his forehead was a black metal headband with horns, his being much larger and curved. In each of the boy's hands large spiraling black balls of pure energy could be seen. This boy is Uzumaki who was once a bright, kind and caring boy, even with the infamous Kayubi no Yoko sealed inside of him. All of that changed when he was forced to kill his best friend, brother to save him from a madman wanting control over his body. That was only the first strike. The next came when he lost his entire village during an invasion from a wannabe god. The last strike would come when the fourth great shinobi world war started and Obito mercilessly slaughtered all of his friends and his lover. That was the last strike, and the moment, Naruto stopped caring about anything. The only thing he wanted to do was kill. Kill he did, as nothing nor no one that stood before him walked away alive. The allied forces had started to call him the devil. It was not only a fact, but one that many respected, that once Naruto showed up, the battle was instantly going to be in their favor. Madara spotting Naruto, tossed one of his truth-seeking orbs at Naruto, who to the shock of the ones watching, vanished as a tear in the dimension appeared. Naruto appearing beside Madara slammed one of the balls into Madara's chest and whispered out, Cho Odama Kuro Rasengan. Madara hearing this, used Kamui to make the attack fade through him. Naruto sensing this, waited until the Kamui was over and slammed the other really big black spiraling ball into Madara's wide open chest. Madara screaming as the attack hit him, flew back and collided with the empty husk of the ten tails. He getting up with blood flowing from his mouth glared at Naruto and spat out, How did you get so powerful? Surely that failure of an Uchiha didn't give you this much power. Naruto turning to look at the Zetsu army, rose his right hand and fired six white bone bullets from his fingers. These bullets quickly transformed into huge spinning drills coated with ice, lightning, fire, wind, earth, or lava. The drills tore through the army. Naruto turning to look at Madara with emotionless eyes said, This power was given to me by my new mother. Someone who hates what you have done to her nursery and despises the sage of six paths. Naruto moving his head to the left dodged a fireball from Obito. Naruto then pulling out his own tibia, that had a sharp edge, sliced Obito in half, not even caring as the blood sprayed all over him. Naruto then felt his face turn slightly as Madara landed a rather nasty punch in the right side of his face. The collision could be heard throughout the battlefield, yet Naruto still had his emotionless face on. Madara felt his eyes widen as it felt like he had just punched a cement wall. Naruto then quicker than Madara could see, slammed his fist into the man's gut sending him flying miles away. Naruto turning his head back, turned to the Zetsu army and said, Blaze release, almighty punishment of the sun goddess Jutsu. Billions of black flaming arrows appeared and descended on the dead men walking army. Naruto then raising his left hand caught a truth seeking ball. Turning to look at the now very bloody and panting Madara he said, It's time I ended you. Before Madara could retort, Naruto was behind him holding something in his right hand, that was caked in very wet blood. Madara turning his head slightly gained wide eyes spotting his own still beating heart in Naruto's hand. Naruto crushing the heart said, 
die and never disturb the world of the living again. Madara let out one last rage-filled roar, before he fell to the ground dead. Naruto walking over to Madara's dead body, grabbed the staff and plucked out Madara's eyes. Naruto walking towards the allied forces was making sure that he had everything ready, as today he left the elemental nations, and he planned on dragging as much chakra as he could with him. Naruto then jumping into the air, allowed his body to float above the battlefield. He lifting up his new staff, closed his eyes and said, I am no longer Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. No I am Otsutsuki Naruto, brother to the sage of six paths, and new child of Otsutsuki Kagaya. This war is over, all Zetsu. Surrender peacefully or be wiped from existence. Every single Zetsu surrendered, and the allied forces cheered. Naruto holding out his open right hand said, I am leaving the elemental nations, as I am simply too powerful and once the dust from this war settles people will try to either control me, or kill me. Thus I am leaving before they get the chance, my last act will be to bring eternal lasting peace to the elemental nations, by removing all weaponry, all chakra, and the tailed beast. He opening his now glowing eyes said, Basho Tenin. Everyone gasped when all weapons, chakra and even the tail beast flew to Naruto. All of it sinking into Naruto, who didn't even flinch. He now shrouded in a pure white cloak of energy said, Goodbye elemental nations. Find peace and prosper. He then vanished, the elemental nations cheering his name, and thanking him for his last gift. Chapter 2 Naruto arriving in a new dimension, looked around wondering what was going on. He then heard a strong and powerful female voice say, It seems as you have landed in the dimension with those strange beings who use the pure physical form of chakra. I believe it's called Ki. Anyway you are the strongest being in not only the world that you're on, which is earth by the way, but most likely the strongest being in the universe. Don't get cocky though Sochi, you still need to train. Naruto taking off his headband, and changing his cloak into a pair of black emo jeans and a red shirt that spelled out his name, slipped his hands in his pocket and said, Hi Oka-sama. He then started to walk around, until he reached a city. Entering the nearest shopping center, he used his powers to make himself some of this world's money. Actually he made himself a lot of this world's money. He then walking into a few stores started to buy many things, until he was walking towards his new home, well where his home was going to be, with a black hooded jacket on his body, zipped halfway up, and a pair of black shades to hide his eyes. Reaching his new land, he simply said, Mokaton, four pillar house jutsu, from the ground a simple wooden home appeared. He shaking his head made many clones appear. He then said, All right, you've got your base, turn this place into a fortress. The clones saluting cried out, Hi. Naruto nodding at this walked to the nearest forest and got to training. Two years later, and Naruto was sitting in his room, playing with Adam when suddenly he sensed a powerful energy source heading towards earth. Standing up he put on his black shirt, and grabbed his modified Samahata. Walking out of his mansion, he ignored all of the monstrous animals staring at him in wonder and walked out of his gates. Closing his eyes, he tried to find the energy. Opening his left eye he said, It's heading towards where Goku's power is. He snorting said, Why does that man always attract trouble, oh well. Naruto then started his walk towards Roshi's home. At said home Goku could be seen glaring at Raditz who had a sneer on his face as Goku had just refused to join him. Raditz grabbing Gohan, said, you have one hour to kill ten humans, or I'll kill your son. Gohan who was crying, said, daddy help me. Raditz, before Goku could do anything else, flew away, a crying Gohan with him the entire time. Goku was about to go chase Raditz, when Krillin cried out, Goku you can't face that guy by yourself. Goku turning to Krillin, I'm not your coming with right. Krillin sweat dropping said, sorry buddy but I'd be flattened by the guy before I could even lift a finger. Goku was about to argue when a gruff voice said, he's right you know. All eyes turned in the direction of the voice, and eyes widened. Floating there was Piccolo. Goku asked, what are you doing here Piccolo? Piccolo said, I tracked that man here, he attacked me first thinking that I was you. Goku then asked, you're gonna help me defeat him right? Piccolo rolling his eyes said, of course, come on let's go take him down. Goku nodding called to his magical flying cloud and took off with Piccolo towards Raditz. 
Naruto who had changed direction after feeling Raditz, head a different direction, started to whistle a simple tune. When he finally arrived Goku was hit by the special beam cannon Piccolo had fired through Raditz's chest, killing the both of them, but not before Raditz, warned them of the incoming threat. Naruto rolling his eyes walked over to the knocked out Gohan and picked the kid up by the neck. Smiling at the boy he walked over to Piccolo and said, I'll be training this kid, I like him. Don't, even think about trying to argue, because not only will it result in you perishing, but then Goku couldn't be wished back, plus the earth would be down a defender. Oh and if you wish to know who I am, you should speak to your other half. Naruto then vanished. Piccolo who had caught a tiny glimpse at Naruto's power, was trembling in pure fear, as Naruto had more power than anything he had ever encountered. Shaking his head Piccolo decided to do exactly as Naruto had told him and was going to have a conversation with his other half. Krillin and the other arriving not too soon later, all paled as someone had to inform Chi Chi of what had happened. Naruto was sitting on one of his tigers, waiting for Gohan to wake up from his nap. He had already worked out what he was going to train the boy in. The boy was going to learn a few jutsu, nothing too powerful, and maybe he'll give the boy one of the tailed beast. Shrugging he pulled out his flute and started to play it. An hour later Gohan would wake up and gasp spotting the sheer beauty of his surroundings. Naruto jumping down with a smile on his face said, Welcome to my humble adobe. My name is Otsutsuki Naruto, but for the next year you will know me as Naruto Sensei. You see in a year a warrior alien race known as the Saiyans, two of them to be exact will be coming to earth to destroy it, and kill everyone. I rather liking my new home decided that I'll be personally training you. Naruto spotting the fear in Gohan's eyes smiled and patted the boy on his head while I smiling. He said, Don't worry kid. I'll let you see your mom, and friends. After all the only way to become truly strong is to protect what's precious to you. Gohan smiled at this, and asked, When do we start Naruto sensei? Naruto shaking his head said, After we eat. Come. Gohan eagerly followed Naruto, not knowing that he was basically being trained by a god. Three months later and Gohan was sparring with Naruto, well a clone of Naruto while the real Naruto was having a rather pleasant conversation with Bulma briefs, about the dragon balls. Naruto had learned about the balls as soon as he arrived, but decided to humor the young woman. Naruto was shirtless, showing off his amazingly toned upper body. He had on a pair of black jeans, but was barefooted. Bulma was trying not to blush spotting Naruto's figure, suddenly Naruto turned his head and smiled. He standing up said, it seems as Gohan is ready for his first lesson in chakra, I think I'll teach him the replacement jutsu first. He turning to the confused Bulma, said, oh pardon me my dear, I forgot to inform you that this is only a small part of my home, come and see the rest. He then started walking towards Gohan's location, feeling Bulma following him like a lost sheep. Naruto arriving in a new dimension, looked around wondering what was going on. He then heard a strong and powerful female voice say, It seems as you have landed in the dimension with those strange beings who use the pure physical form of chakra. I believe it's called Ki. Anyway you are the strongest being in not only the world that you're on, which is earth by the way, but most likely the strongest being in the universe. Don't get cocky though Sochi, you still need to train. Naruto taking off his headband, and changing his cloak into a pair of black emo jeans and a red shirt that spelled out his name slipped his hands in his pocket and said, Hi Oka-sama. He then started to walk around, until he reached a city. Entering the nearest shopping center, he used his powers to make himself some of this world's money. Actually he made himself a lot of this world's money. He then walking into a few stores started to buy many things, until he was walking towards his new home, well where his home was going to be, with a black hooded jacket on his body, zipped halfway up, and a pair of black shades to hide his eyes. Reaching his new land, he simply said, Mokaton, Four Pillar House Jutsu. From the ground a simple wooden home appeared. He shaking his head made many clones appear. He then said, Alright you've got your base, turn this place into a fortress. The clones saluting cried out, Hi. Naruto nodding at this walked to the nearest forest and got to training. Two years later and Naruto was sitting in his room, playing with Adam when suddenly he sensed a powerful energy source heading towards earth. Standing up he put on his black shirt, and grabbed his modified Samahata. Walking out of his mansion, 
he ignored all of the monstrous animals staring at him in wonder and walked out of his gates. Closing his eyes, he tried to find the energy. Opening his left eye he said, it's heading towards where Goku's power is. He snorting said, why does that man always attract trouble, oh well. Naruto then started his walk towards Roshi's home. At said home Goku could be seen glaring at Raditz who had a sneer on his face as Goku had just refused to join him. Raditz grabbing Gohan, said, you have one hour to kill ten humans, or I'll kill your son. Gohan who was crying, said, daddy help me. Raditz, before Goku could do anything else, flew away, a crying Gohan with him the entire time. Goku was about to go chase Raditz, when Krillin cried out, Goku you can't face that guy by yourself. Goku turning to Krillin, I'm not your coming with right. Krillin sweat dropping said, sorry buddy but I'd be flattened by the guy before I could even lift a finger. Goku was about to argue when a gruff voice said, he's right you know. All eyes turned in the direction of the voice, and eyes widened, floating there was Piccolo. Goku asked, what are you doing here Piccolo? Piccolo said, I tracked that man here, he attacked me first thinking that I was you. Goku then asked, you're gonna help me defeat him right? Piccolo rolling his eyes said, of course, come on let's go take him down. Goku nodding called to his magical flying cloud and took off with Piccolo towards Raditz. Naruto who had changed direction after feeling Raditz, head a different direction, started to whistle a simple tune. When he finally arrived Goku was hit by the special beam cannon Piccolo had fired through Raditz chest, killing the both of them, but not before Raditz, warned them of the incoming threat. Naruto rolling his eyes walked over to the knocked out Gohan and picked the kid up by the neck. Smiling at the boy he walked over to Piccolo and said, I'll be training this kid. I like him. Don't even think about trying to argue, because not only will it result in you perishing, but then Goku couldn't be wished back, plus the earth would be down a defender. Oh and if you wish to know who I am, you should speak to your other half. Naruto then vanished. Piccolo who had caught a tiny glimpse at Naruto's power, was trembling in pure fear, as Naruto had more power than anything he had ever encountered. Shaking his head Piccolo decided to do exactly as Naruto had told him and was going to have a conversation with his other half. Krillin and the other arriving not too soon later, all paled as someone had to inform Chi Chi of what had happened. Naruto was sitting on one of his tigers, waiting for Gohan to wake up from his nap. He had already worked out what he was going to train the boy in. The boy was going to learn a few jutsu, nothing too powerful, and maybe he'll give the boy one of the tailed beast. Shrugging he pulled out his flute and started to play it. An hour later Gohan would wake up and gasp spotting the sheer beauty of his surroundings. Naruto jumping down with a smile on his face said, Welcome to my humble adobe. My name is Otsutsuki Naruto, but for the next year you will know me as Naruto Sensei. You see in a year a warrior alien race known as the Saiyans, two of them to be exact will be coming to earth to destroy it, and kill everyone. I rather liking my new home decided that I'll be personally training you. Naruto spotting the fear in Gohan's eyes smiled and patted the boy on his head while I smiling. He said, don't worry kid. I'll let you see your mom, and friends. After all the only way to become truly strong is to protect what's precious to you. Gohan smiled at this, and asked, when do we start Naruto sensei? Naruto shaking his head said, after we eat, come. Gohan eagerly followed Naruto, not knowing that he was basically being trained by a god. Three months later and Gohan was sparring with Naruto, well a clone of Naruto while the real Naruto was having a rather pleasant conversation with Bulma briefs, about the dragon balls. Naruto had learned about the balls as soon as he arrived, but decided to humor the young woman. Naruto was shirtless, showing off his amazingly toned upper body, he had on a pair of black jeans, but was barefooted. Bulma was trying not to blush spotting Naruto's figure. Suddenly Naruto turned his head and smiled. He standing up said, it seems as Gohan is ready for his first lesson in chakra, I think I'll teach him the replacement jutsu first. He turning to the confused Bulma, said, oh pardon me my dear, I forgot to inform you that this is only a small part of my home, come and see the rest. He then started walking towards Gohan's location, feeling Bulma following him like a lost sheep. Arriving in his garden, he smiled spotting Gohan in his new attire. Gohan was now wearing a pair of black pants, a hole cut out in the back for his tail. 
His feet were adorned with black shinobi sandals. He wore a red shirt, with the kanji for godly demon king. Gohan spotting his sensei and Bulma smiled and said, Hey Naruto sensei, Mrs. Bulma. Naruto laughing said, Hello Gohan I see you finally managed to defeat my shadow clone, now I can begin your lessons in my energy called chakra. It takes the spiritual element of ki and combines it with the physical element. With this you will be able to use jutsu like shadow clone jutsu. Naruto then turning to Bulma smiled and said, You're welcome to stay and watch me train Gohan. Bulma nodding said, I'll stay for a bit before I get back to the lab. Naruto smiling at this walked to the middle of the training ground and sat down. Motioning for Gohan to sit beside him, he closed his eyes and said, All right Gohan, the first step in activating your chakra is to meditate. You're looking for the power inside, it's feel different than ki. My guess is yours will feel like a burning raging fire, as I have transferred the chakra of the Nibi no Nekomata to you. Gohan sitting down did exactly as Naruto instructed and soon was producing a small and steady chakra aura. Naruto smiling said, Good job Gohan, now I'm going to teach you the replacement and shadow clone jutsu. I promise that in 9 months time, you'll be slinging a rank jutsu. Gohan looking at Naruto asked, Will I be able to do that cool Rasengan thing I've seen you do? Naruto smirking said, Of course, though you'll have to start with the first step. Gohan nodding said, All right Naruto sensei. Naruto turning to Bulma said, You may inform his mother that her baby boy is also going to be learning strategy and logic while here, so he'll not only be strong in body, but strong in mind. Bulma nodding said, I will Naruto san. She then left, and Naruto felt like things were going his way. Nine months later and Gohan was standing beside Piccolo, Krillin, Tien, Yamcha, and Shoutsu. They were waiting for the Saiyans to arrive, and Piccolo was wondering where Naruto was. Naruto was there, he was simply sitting not too far away, eating popcorn, ready to watch the fireworks. He had already informed Gohan of this, and told his student, that he would step in only if things started to look bad. Just then Nappa and Vegeta landed. Some talking happened, but before long Yamcha was battling a little green man. Personally it freaked Naruto out a little bit, he rolled his eyes, when Yamcha got a little too cocky and ended up being blown to atoms by the suicidal little thing. He nodded when Krillin got mad and slaughtered the little things. Then Nappa stepped in, and Shoutsu, and Tien ended up giving their all to kill the huge Saiyan elite. They sadly failed. Now it was just to beat up Krillin, a injured Piccolo, and a perfectly fine Gohan, as he had yet to enter the fray. Gohan closing his eyes stepped forward and said, time to show this idiot the teachings of the great godly demon king. He quickly crossing his fingers cried out, shadow clone jutsu. A huge poof of smoke occurred revealing 100 identical Gohan. The original, crossing his arms, tapped into his nibi chakra, and was surrounded in a thick aura of blue flaming chakra. Gohan opening his eyes, vanished along with his clones. Nappa was soon struggling to keep up with Gohan, until he landed a terrible punch to the original which sent him flying and dispelled all of his clones. Nappa now shaking with rage said, You little twerp. You're dead now. He then fired a very large beam of ki and Gohan, which Piccolo blocked with his body. Nappa charged up again, but this time a red glowing Goku stopped him. After getting utterly humiliated by Goku, Nappa begged Vegeta to help him, only to be destroyed. Goku and Vegeta then flew a distance away, Gohan and Krillin going the other way. Naruto sighing said, I guess it's about time for the real battle to begin. He looking at his half-eaten popcorn said, Oh well, hopefully I won't have to get involved, so I can finish my popcorn. He shrugging once again vanished in a flash of purple light. He reappeared at the battle scene of Goku and Vegeta, and boy was it good. One minute Goku's kicking Vegeta into orbit, the next Vegeta is beating Goku like a slave. The two soon had a battle of wills, using their strongest attacks. Goku won, and a coward who Naruto refused to even remember came out of hiding and jumped the gun by congratulating Goku for defeating Vegeta. Lucky for the coward, Goku informed him that the Saiyan prince wasn't dead. Sure enough not soon later, Vegeta came down with his little monkey tail, looking very pissed off, probably because of Naruto sealing the moon in his pocket dimension, not wanting to deal with a raging great ape. 
Anyway the prince of all Saiyans then created a glowing ball that actually allowed him to transform into said form. Goku of course not having a tail was quickly getting smashed. Naruto spotting the man on his last legs, sighed and dismissed his popcorn. Shaking his head he allowed his dujutsu and new battle outfit appear. It was a black shirt, with the smirking face of a wolf on the front, on the back the kanji for god demon king could be seen. Around his waist was his former Konoha headband, with a few dents. He had on black jeans that ripped at the knees. On his feet were thick black boots. On his forehead was his horn headband. Sighing he vanished and caught one of Vegeta's hands before it could smash Goku. Naruto staring the great ape in the eyes said, You faced the second best earth has to offer. Now we will test the power of the great Saiyan race, against the god demon king, Jubi no Ukami god of hatred and war, Otsutsuki Naruto. The battle was about to start, and this one no one was ever going to forget. Vegeta trying to move his hand, roared out, Who are you and how dare you interfere with Saiyan business? Naruto snorting tossed the man back and said, I just told you who I am fool, now then almighty push. Vegeta gained wide eyes when he found himself being blasted back by an unseen force. He colliding with a group of rocks, gained wide eyes when he felt a huge power level suddenly appear. The power level was ten times larger than Frieza and he was a monster. His eyes then spotting Naruto hovering above him gained wide eyes when Naruto said, One tails, tailed beast ball. The attack hitting Vegeta made the Saiyan prince scream in pure pain. Vegeta making it to his feet, placed his hand on his chest where the attack had landed. He drawing his hand back gained wide eyes spotting blood on his hand. He roaring in rage, swung at Naruto who simply dodged the attack. Vegeta enraged kept swinging at Naruto hoping to hit him, but nothing was working. His eyes widened when, he felt his tail be lopped off. He roaring, shrunk down to regular Vegeta, turning around he growled spotting Yahirobi. He was about to kick the fat man, when he felt a kick connect to his stomach. He bending over, was then lifted off of his feet by Naruto who landed uppercut to his face. Naruto then backhanded Vegeta sending him crashing into some rocks. Vegeta getting up started giving it his all to beat Naruto, but nothing was working. He jumping back decided to try his Gaelic gun again. He charging it up said, Kakarot may have been able to counter this attack, but there's no way you'll be able to. Naruto rolling his eyes, allowed a Rasengan to appear in his hand. Vegeta firing his attack, gained wide eyes when Naruto hit his prized attack with the Rasengan and defeated it. Naruto rolling his eyes again said, You're really arrogant ya no. Naruto then vanished again and landed a savage kick to Vegeta's gut, forcing the Saiyan prince to his knees. Naruto then punched the man square in his chest, followed by several punches to the face. Vegeta flying back, could feel that a lot of his ribs were broken or fractured. Naruto appearing grabbed Vegeta by the back of his head and slammed it hard into the ground. Naruto then jumped back. Vegeta struggling to his feet, puked up a good amount of blood. Wiping his mouth, he charged up and rushed towards Naruto. Naruto catching Vegeta's right fist, moved his head avoiding the left fist. He then head butting Vegeta, knocked the prince back. He then started to beat the ever living daylights out of the Saiyan prince. Vegeta slamming into the ground for the tenth time, could only wonder who was the monster he was being owned by. Naruto appearing over Vegeta said, Are you done yet? Vegeta standing up barely spat out blood and said, I'll never be done. Naruto sighing said, Fine I'll just have to break every bone in your body then, prepare yourself. Not too far away Goku was looking at Naruto with shock as he leaned on Krillin's shoulders. Gohan smiling said, Naruto sensei isn't even going full power. My guess he's at about 15, maybe even 20. Goku, Krillin, and Yahirobi hearing this all felt their jaws scrape the ground. Krillin then asked for the three of them, Are you telling me that this guy is not even using half of his full power, yet he is easily defeating someone we all had trouble with? Gohan nodding said, Yeah, I've seen Naruto sensei use half of his full power. The first time, I felt like crawling into a corner and becoming a worm. It was like trying to swim in space, without any oxygen. Goku hearing this turned to Gohan and asked, This man trained you? Gohan smiling turned around to show his mark. 
he said, Yep I'm the only student of the godly demon king. Yahirobi gulping asked, He's on our side right? Gohan nodding said, Yeah he likes his new home, earth that is. He might also have a thing for Ms. Boma. Krillin hearing this shook his head and said, That poor fool. Gohan laughing said, That's funny Master Roshi said the same thing. Goku then asked, Did he tell you what he is or how he got so strong? Gohan gaining a serious face said, Dad he's a god. I mean literally he's a god. If he wanted to he could destroy this entire galaxy. He doesn't because and I quote, It'd be too troublesome to deal with Okaasama's wrath. He's so strong because he's fought in war that decided the very fate of his home dimension, plus the ten monsters made of living energy he has sealed inside of him, not for his safety, but for theirs. Goku hearing this gained wide eyes and said, he doesn't even look twenty. Gohan turning to look at Naruto said, he's seventeen dad. Krillin hearing this nearly passed out and shouted, he's only seventeen. Gohan nodding said, yeah and you should see his compound, it's huge. I mean he has three large mansions, an underground lab, and sixteen forest on his land. When I left he had been working on a lake for his aquatic animals, as his pocket dimension isn't meant for living beings. Oh and that's where the moon is. He put it inside of the pocket dimension somehow knowing that the Saiyans needed it to transform into giant apes. Funny thing is that I've seen him transform into a giant, fox, cat, wolf, and even a four-tailed red-furred ape. So I wonder why he didn't just use those forms on Vegeta. Goku hearing this asked, was he in control of these forms? Gohan flinching as Vegeta's arm was broken said, yeah he has complete control over all forms. He then smiling said, he even told me that his mom could probably turn him into a full-blooded Saiyan if she got enough Saiyan DNA. I'm pretty sure she's getting all of the DNA she needs now. Goku hearing this asked, why didn't she get it from you? Gohan pouting said, Kagaya Haim said I was half human, and her baby already has enough human DNA. Krillin hearing this laughed and said, Welcome to my world Gohan. Gohan still pouting said, Naruto sensei even said that he didn't even want human DNA, as it would only make him weaker. Goku hearing this started to laugh, followed by Krillin, then Yahirobi, then finally Gohan. Naruto punching Vegeta in the back asked, Can you feel anything? Vegeta struggling to his feet glared and said, I will not be bested by a stupid earthling. Naruto sighing said, fine, but remember you asked for this. He appearing in front of Vegeta said, prepare to meet mother, Sukuyomi. Vegeta looking him in the eyes, blinked finding himself tied to a cross, in a black and red world. He gained wide eyes when Kagaya appeared. She with her arms crossed said, you have the arrogance of an Uchiha, yet none of their skill. It matters not, as you will be supplying me with what I need to make my precious baby boy into a full-blooded Saiyan. She then gaining a scary grin, pulled out many scalpels and needles. Vegeta trying to break free was like, no stay away from me, no. Kagaya shoving a syringe into his arms said, scream as loud and for long as you like. No one can hear you scream in here. Outside of Naruto's mind nothing happened for about 5 seconds, when suddenly Vegeta let out a blood-curdling scream. He falling to the ground, lifted his trembling hands to his face. He looking at Naruto with pure fear said, You're more of a monster than Frieza, at least he has some honor. Naruto yawning said, There is no honor among thieves fool, and it's even worse for a shinobi. Naruto walking up to him asked, now are you going to leave peacefully or am I gonna have to start puncturing internal organs, because believe it or not this battle is starting to bore me, and I know all eight of the lethal points on a human body. You may be saying, but I'm sure the points are at least similar. Vegeta hearing this pulled out a remote from his pocket and pushed it. He glaring at Naruto said, this isn't over, I'll be back for you and Kakarot. Naruto yawning turned around and started to walk away while saying, yeah sure whatever. Just be stronger next time and maybe I'll have to use more than 15% of my power. Vegeta hearing how much power Naruto was using, felt his pride get hit by a Godzilla-sized fist. He staring at Naruto with fear thought, that was only 15% of his power. Good god how bad would he have beaten me if he'd used 20%, I shudder to think. Naruto walking over to Gohan and the others smiled and patted Gohan on the head while saying, good job squirt. 
for doing so well against the Saiyans, I'll start forging a sword for you. Maybe I'll make it with one of my fangs. Gohan hearing this gained stars in his eyes and asked, Are you serious Naruto sensei? Naruto laughing said, Of course, my student deserves only the strongest sword, not to mention it being made of my fang will allow you to use ninjutsu through the power of your sword. Will probably place about 50% of my chakra and key inside of it, along with a chakra replenishing seal on the blade to keep it from running out. Everyone ignored when Vegeta climbed into his pod and flew away. Goku coughing asked, Are you really a god? Naruto turning to Goku and said, Yes I am a god. My name is Otsutsuki Naruto, and I am the godly demon king. I am also the Jubi no Ukami. I have also recently gained the DNA of a Saiyan. He then turning to Yahirobi said, You are a coward, but I respect you for being brave enough to cut off Vegeta's tail, even when I didn't need the help. In fact I was kinda having fun. Don't worry it'd be too troublesome to hear mom's nagging if I punished you. He turning to Krillin said, You are one of the bravest if not most foolish humans I have ever seen. Naruto I smiling at Krillin said, You are welcome to train with me at any time, along with Goku and your other friends. Naruto feeling people heading this way, I smiled and said, Well then I'll be off, catch you later Gohan, Goku, Krillin, coward. He then vanished in a flash of purple lightning. Gohan with starts in his eyes said, That was so cool. Krillin with his chest puffed out said, I just complimented by a god. No woman will be able to resist my charm now. Goku laughing said, I like him, maybe I could ask him for a spar. Yahirobi scowling said, He didn't even say my name, he just called me coward and left. Everyone started to laugh loudly at this making Yahirobi mumble under his breath about ingrates with no respect for a swordsman. Naruto appearing home, took off his shirt and plopped down in the grass beside his lake. Laying back in the grass he closed his eyes and said, That's one threat stopped, along with announcing myself to the world. Remind me again why you had me do that mom. Kagaya materializing in front of him said, It was to let the humans and the world in general that you're here and that you'll be protecting them from any threats that the Z warriors can't handle. Naruto yawning rolled over to his side and said, Whatever you say mom, I just think it was an idea to give myself an ego, or maybe get me some cursed fangirls. Either way I'm not too worried, good night mom. Kagaya smiling, placed a blanket over him and kissed the middle of his forehead while saying, Good night baby. The next day Naruto was woken up, by a loud pounding on his front door. Kicking off the blanket, he grumbled about people not respecting a god's rest time. Opening his door he blinked spotting Bulma, along with Gohan, Chi Chi, a bandaged Krillin and Master Roshi. He blinking asked, Okay why are you here, not that I mind my student being here, or Mrs. Briefs but Roshi's a pervert and Krillin looks like he's got beat after Vegeta fled the earth. Chi Chi was giving Naruto a harsh glare, Bulma looked slightly upset, Roshi was shaking his head in pity, Krillin was doing the same, while Gohan looked like a kid that caught with his hands in the cookie jar. Chi Chi then roared out, What have you been teaching my precious little Gohan? He won't stop talking about swords, kanai, shuriken and a sword made of scales? Bulma asked, Why did you let Yamcha, Tien, Chaotzu, and Piccolo die? You could have stepped in at any time. Gohan told us you were there watching. Naruto sighing said, Because I wanted to see how Earth's mightiest warriors stood against a threat they'd never seen before. I'm proud to say that most of them passed. Coward and Yamcha San failed with one being so terrified his belly was yellow, the other being so arrogant he let his enemy get the drop on him. Piccolo died protecting one of his comrades. Chaotzu died trying to take out an enemy to save his friend. Tian died trying to avenge said friend. All very noble deaths in my eyes. Krillin even though very weak, wasn't afraid to take on someone much stronger than him, thus he has gained my respect and is allowed to train here at any time. Goku while a little strange has shown himself to be a powerful warrior, one who could one day go toe to toe with me. He then I smiling said, Gohan so far has the most potential. His heart is large and he loves nature. The Saiyan blood running through him demands that he protect that he finds precious. He is like me in that aspect as I will protect all that is precious to me, and any who threatens that will be wiped from existence. He then turning to Chi Chi said, as for what I have been teaching him, 
I have been teaching him logic, strategy, kenjutsu, some taijutsu and how to meditate. I've also balanced out his mental progress with his physical progress. He has learned how to throw shuriken, kanai, and can at least properly hold a senbon. Everyone blinked at this, well besides Gohan who said, Sensei you still haven't shown me how to disable an opponent with the senbon without killing them. Naruto smiling said, indeed I haven't, now is as good as a time as any, follow me to the training grounds. Gohan happily followed his awesome sensei, followed by a curious Chi Chi, thinking Bulma, curious Roshi, and a limping Krillin. Arriving at the training ground, everyone besides Gohan gasped. All around them beauty like any they had ever seen was visible. Animals that were surely not natural walked around like it was no big deal. Chi Chi nearly fainted spotting cats the size of houses walking around. Gohan then gained stars in his eyes spotting the lake. Running towards it he peered into it. He turning back to look at the smiling Naruto asked, Is it finished sensei? Naruto walking over to Gohan said, Yes it is Gohan. This little lake leads to an ocean of marine animals from giant man-eating sharks, to simple oyster-eating otters. After I demonstrate the use of a senbon you're welcome to explore it. All of you are welcome to explore my home. Everyone nodded. Naruto then walking over to worn out looking training dummies, pulled out a few ice senbon and said, All right Gohan as you know senbon are mainly used to stop a target's muscles and immobilize the victim. They can when hitting the right area kill the target, but it's very hard to do. That's why most people who use senbon coat them with poison or use them in conjunction with another shinobi art. Watch carefully as I demonstrate how to put someone in a false death state with the senbon. He then closing his eyes, quickly let his senbon fly. He hearing gasping opened his eyes and smiled spotting the test dummy on the ground with a few senbon piercing its neck. Naruto turning to Gohan sweat dropped spotting the stars in said boy's eyes. Gohan appearing beside him asked, when am I going to learn how to do that Naruto sensei? Naruto laughing said, after you read the notes of Yuki Haku on medical herbs, Sarutobi Hiruzen's notes on the first use of the Senbon and the full story of the first great shinobi world war, from all sides. You must also successfully defeat Matabi in a game of shogi. Gohan hearing this instantly deflated and said, that's so much boring stuff Naruto sensei, can't I just use the virtual goggles to experience all of that, and Matabi scares me. Naruto laughing said, no as you must take notes, and this time she'll be in more control of herself, I promise. Gohan sighing said, alright sensei I'll start after I explore the ocean. Naruto clapping said, good now don't wake Isobu as he's just gone to sleep after digging himself a nice cave to hide in. Gohan already knee deep in the water said, I will Naruto sensei. Naruto turning to Bulma said, I believe you wish to talk to me about other things. Bulma nodding said, we have to find a way to bring the ones who died back. Naruto extending his arm to her said, well then allow me to escort you to my lab, my fair lady. Bulma blushing took his arm and walked with Naruto to the lab. Chi Chi walking back inside of the actual building wondered if Naruto had a library. Krillin decided to explore with Gohan and followed the boy. Roshi on the other hand looked in all directions. Once sure no one was near pulled out a very familiar little orange book and started to read. Seconds later very perverted giggling could be heard. Naruto with Bulma in his lab, was listening to the woman rant about not being able to bring back any of the others without Kami or Piccolo. She was also ranting about her now ex-boyfriend Yamcha cheating on her with some bimbo at a baseball game. On the outside he was listening while on the inside he was playing a game of cards with Kurama and Black Zetsu. Kurama nodding for Naruto on the outside asked, This human woman can sure talk. Remind me again why we're listening to her, and you haven't just claimed her as your maid already. Naruto picking up two cards said, Because mom would kill me if I did so and I really don't want to be beaten to near death anytime soon. Zetsu putting down a card said, I agree with my little brother, mother can very scary when she's upset. Kurama smirking said, You two are nothing but chicken mama's boys. Oh and I win I got 20. Zetsu rolling his eyes said, you'd be a mama's boy too if your mother could kill you with a look. Oh and I bust, 27. Naruto sensing Bulma about to ask him a question said, I'm afraid I win Kurama. I got 21, see ya. He blinked just as Bulma asked, 
If I kissed you, would you kiss me back? He not bashing an eyelash said, If you kissed me, I do much more than kiss you back. She hearing this blushed and leaned forward to kiss him. Naruto kissing her back, wrapped his arms around her frame and pulled her close to his body. The two of them making out for about five minutes stopped to come up for air, well Bulma did, Naruto was perfectly fine. Bulma with half-lidded eyes asked, Is there somewhere more private we can continue this? Naruto answered her question by teleporting the both of them to his bedroom, L. Ocking the door, and placing seals on the handle to block out all of the noise that was surely to come out of the room. Two days later Bulma was sitting at her house sitting in a tub of ice. She had the goofiest smile on her face though, as she had just gotten back home after being ravaged by a god. She shivered remembering how good of a lover Naruto was. She knew that she was ruined for any other man. Hell she didn't even want any other man. She wanted the 17-year-old, blonde-haired, blue-eyed Adonis known as Otsutsuki Naruto. She then remembered that he was the last of his clan and was required by law to marry multiple women. He had told her that if she decided to be one of his girls, she'd get a large voice in the other women he married. She could already see it, Bulma Otsutsuki, wife number one of Naruto Otsutsuki. She didn't even care how many wives he had, as long as she was one of them. Sighing peacefully she smiled as he had also given here a way to bring the others back, they needed to get to planet Namek, and Mr. Popo had the perfect way for them to get there. That reminded her she needed to hurry and get rid of the soreness so she could go get a look at Kami's ship. She coming out of the bathroom a few seconds later put her clothes on, and decided to put the new earrings Naruto had given her to her on. They looked like purple crescent moons, and looked very expensive. She then spotting Mr. Popo traveled with the man to see Kami's ship. Naruto himself was in the other world, walking down Snake Way. He had decided to meet King Kai and the other people in the spirit world. He was about halfway there, when his hot woman's senses started going wild. Turning his head he blinked spotting a castle. Entering said castle he blinked spotting all of the snake-like women walking around. This wasn't why his hot woman's senses had been going wild though. Walking further into the castle he finally found the reason why his senses were going crazy. Sitting in a throne of sorts was Princess Snake. She spotting him licked her lips and said, My what a handsome man. He chuckling said, My what a gorgeous princess, too bad she's a snake. Princess Snake blinking asked, How did you know? Naruto tapping his nose said, Nothing fools the nose my lady. Snake standing up sauntered over to him and with a slight hiss asked, is me being a snake going to be a problem? Naruto rolling his eyes said, Nope because lady I'm a full on demon, and a god. Snake hearing this hissed in pleasure and asked, Then you wouldn't mind staying with me for a while. Naruto chuckling said, I'm sorry my fair lady, but I have people to see and things to do, but I will visit you again sometime along with my woman. He then vanished in a burst of dense red mist. Snake seeing this licked her lips. Bulma now sitting in Kami's spaceship side wondering what Naruto was doing at the moment. Gohan was reading a book about the first shinobi world war, while Krillin was pouting about not getting any attention from his new girlfriend before they left. She still couldn't believe that the bald monk had managed to land a girl. Of course she had a theory that Krillin must have mentioned the battle with the Saiyans and how he was one of the fighters, as the fight had been on TV every since the battle. Thinking of that made her sigh and wanton lust still feeling phantom aches from her session with Naruto. She smiled at this as Naruto had given her a special kanai that when she threw would instantly teleport him to her location. She had tried to argue about him transporting across space, but he had shut her mouth with a soul-searing kiss to the lips. She touching her lips could only think that she had finally found true love. Naruto sneezed feeling that someone was talking about him. Shaking his head he was using his Rinnegan to find the woman Zetsu was sensing. He arriving at a planet not too far from King Kai's planet. Looking at it closely he sighed spotting four life forces inside of the planet. He rolling up his sleeves extended his hands to the planet. He then said, Outer path samsara of heavenly life technique. He then blinked when four people appeared in front of him. He ignoring the three men, pulled the kinda sexy exotic blue skinned woman out of the planet. He then teleporting to his home set the orange haired girl down on his bed. She waking up blinked and instantly got into a fighting stance. 
Naruto spotting this said, Easy my lady. You're in a safe place. She looking at him and asked, Who are you and where am I? Naruto smiling gently said, You are on earth and I am Otsutsuki Naruto, Jubi no Ukami, godly demon king, most powerful being in existence and a friend to all. The woman narrowing her eyes said, If you're a god, then prove it. Naruto sighing snapped his fingers allowing the earth around him to shift into an active spewing volcano. This made the woman gain wide eyes. Naruto smiling said, Now that I have proven my words, will you tell me your name and why you were trapped in that planet? The woman nodding said, My name is Zanya and I was trapped in that planet for following the words of a madman. Naruto hearing this sighed and said, So you were tricked into doing the bidding of someone more powerful than you. Damn what's up with me and finding damsels with obvious issues. He shrugging his shoulders said, Oh well at least this one has super exotic looks. Zangya hearing this actually blushed at being called super exotic. Naruto then standing up said, I'm going to visit a friend of mine, feel free to explore my home. Naruto then vanished to go and see Goku. By now Bulma and the others had landed on Namek and Gohan was now running away from a large pink man with horns. The reason he was running is because he let his emotions get away from him and kicked the man in the jewels after screaming at him to stop being a big bully. Krillin could be seen in front of him holding a green boy looking much like Piccolo. The two escaping let the green boy go. Bulma learning that Goku was on the way smiled thinking that everything was going to be alright. She was also very tempted to summon Naruto but had decided not to until she was absolutely sure that he was needed, still not believing that he can teleport across space. Naruto sitting in his garden was listening to Kagaya lecture him about letting her future daughter-in-law go off on an adventure without him. Zangya having settled in nicely was sparring with a Naruto shadow clone. Naruto was about to say something when he felt a tug, meaning one thing. He standing up vanished in a flash of red chakra. Appearing on planet Namek he blinked spotting a blue man advancing on the trembling Bulma. The man had green hair, and was wearing the same armor that Vegeta had been wearing. Naruto's energy was held back by Kagaya, but he let a tiny sliver of it loose. This tiny sliver of his power was equal to half of Frieza's power. The blue man stopped in his tracks and slowly turned around. He paled spotting the monster Vegeta had faced on the marble known as Earth. Naruto ignoring the man walked straight to Bulma, he helping her to her feet, gently dusted her off and asked, Are you alright love? Bulma opening her eyes had never been so happy to see Naruto. She hugging him said, that monster over there was going to kill me and take the dragon balls I have. Naruto hearing this created a clone to hold Bulma. He turning around to glare at the man said, you dare threaten my woman, inexcusable. Naruto then unleashed 20% of his power. This caused the sky to darken, the planet to shake, and the seas to roar in rage. Zarbin was now very afraid as Naruto's rage was actually visible with the thin aura of pure black chakra surrounding him. Zarbin didn't even have a chance to say a word, as Naruto's fist was lodged into his gut, sending him flying miles away. Naruto appearing over Zarbin, slammed a hunk of earth down on the man, sending him into the water. Naruto lifting his right hand created a shimmering Rasengan. He tossing the Rasengan into the water said, Ice style, shimmering Rasengan. The ball hitting the water, created a huge pillar of ice, with Zarbin in the middle of it. Naruto then pointing his two fingers at the frozen Zarbin said, Goodbye trash. Full power two tails, tailed beast bomb. From his fingers a blazing blue ball of power hit the frozen Zarbin and literally turned the man into particles. Naruto sealing his power once again teleported back to Bulma who instantly glomped him. He smiling said, I'm here Bulmaheim, everything is gonna be alright now. He didn't know it but his little display of power had alerted all life on planet Namek of his presence. Vegeta could be seen floating over an island trembling in both fear and rage, as without a doubt that had to be Naruto. Gohan was jumping up and down in glee as his sensei was here now and knowing his sensei someone was gonna get their ass kicked. Krillin had a goofy smile on his face as now that Naruto was here Vegeta and all of the other bad guys were history. Frieza in his ship shivered in anticipation of the great challenge this power was going to give him. He sighing though knew that he had some work to do so he summoned the Ginyu force to battle Vegeta and the others. 
He hoped that the new power wouldn't be killed by Ginyu. The Namekians were shocked at how much power this person had. Hell Goku on his way, gained wide eyes not believing that he could feel Naruto's power from space. Naruto ignoring all of this, carried Bulma into her makeshift home, and laid with her gently on her bed. A while later in Gohan, Krillin and Vegeta were struggling to defeat the Ginyu force, as Naruto was still being cuddled by Bulma. He could feel that his clone on Earth was in a similar situation with Zhangya, not that the clone minded at all. That reminded him, he really needed to talk to Kagaya about why his clones had their own personalities. He feeling a large power source beating on Gohan's life force side and created a clone. Switching places with the clone, he teleported to Gohan's location, just in time to catch a fist from the buffoon known as Rikum. Naruto swatting the man away turned to the panting Gohan, beat up Krillin and tired Vegeta. Naruto looking at Gohan asked, Where's your sword Gohan? Gohan leaning up said, That red-skinned freak took it from me. Jiai's hearing this felt a tick grow on his head. Naruto turning to Jiai said, I'm gonna ask you nicely only once. Return what was stolen to my student now or I erase you from existence. Jiai's laughing said, You erase me from existence. How you couldn't even get past Rikum, let alone get to me. Naruto hearing this turned to look at Rikum who was charging towards him. Naruto pushing some chakra into his eyes said, Behold Gohan one of the three unique powers of the Mangekyu Sharingan. He waiting till the last second said, Burn out, Amaterasu. Rikum never had the chance to scream as he was literally consumed by black flames, that shot out of Naruto's eyes. Jiais and Birder seeing this gained wide eyes, while Vegeta started to laugh as he was sure Naruto had been holding back on him when they fought on earth. He was never so glad to be held back against in his life. Naruto turning to regard the still shocked Jiais and Birder said, Goku you can have the blue one I have business with the red one. Everyone blinked when Goku appeared beside Naruto and said, Right. Vegeta truly started to laugh at this as not only was Naruto here, but Goku was here also. Frieza was as good as dead. Naruto and Goku then started to beat the stuffing out of Jiais and Birder until a purple man appeared. Naruto spotting the man said, He's all yours Goku. I'm going back to Bulma before she wakes up or my clone dispels. He was then gone in a swirl of black flames, burning Jiais alive in the process. Naruto would later blink feeling Piccolo be brought back to life. He getting up from the comfy bed he was sharing with Bulma, extended his senses to find out what was going on. He then witnessed everything that had happened and had to shake his head as Goku was now healing in Frieza's spaceship while Vegeta was trying to get his wish granted by stone dragon balls. He then hearing Bulma groan, turned to her and smirked spotting the many hickeys he had placed on her neck. She opening her blue eyes smiled and said, Naruto cuddle with me some more. Naruto shrugging his shoulders laid back down with his woman. About an hour later he blinked feeling Piccolo, Krillin, Gohan, and Vegeta's energy signatures rapidly falling. Sighing he got up out of the bed and teleported to the scene. He blinked spotting the third form Frieza beating down on the four, Krillin looking like he was nearing death's door. Naruto then appearing in front of Frieza as he was about to hit Piccolo again said, Sorry but I need this green bean and I'll be damned if I let you kill my student, or the bald monk. The prince of Saiyans though you could kill. He then tossing Frieza back, turned to Piccolo and said, You're almost as bad as Goku always looking for the next fight, oh well. He then waving his hands healed all four warriors. He then turning to Frieza said, Oi Vegeta pay close attention. You're about to see what 20% of my full power looks like. Naruto then uncapped his power, and Piccolo felt sweat start pouring down his head as Naruto's power was causing the entire planet to shudder in fear. Frieza himself was very happy that he was getting to fight the power from before. He was soon going to wish that Naruto hadn't come to planet Namek. Vegeta with wide eyes was star struck at the might of Naruto. Gohan was laughing at everyone's face as he had already seen his sensei's power. Krillin was shaking in his little white boots he was wearing. Frieza was giggling thinking that Naruto was just showing off. Goku healing inside of Frieza's ship was really eager to spar with Naruto. Bulma sleeping in the cave nuzzled her face with the sleeping Naruto clone's abs. Naruto popping his joints said. Just one moment freak. I need to tap into my first tail. 
He then closing his eyes ignoring the anger rolling off of Frieza, found his first tail and unsealed it. His eyes shooting open revealed golden slitted eyes, and from his ass a thick spiky blonde wolf tailed appeared. Naruto then smirking said in a deep demonic voice. I am now Ichibi no Ukami. I guess that this form is equal to or greater than the legendary Super Saiyan you're so afraid of. Frieza hearing this laughed and said, You're very arrogant fool. I'm going to enjoy destroying you. Naruto snorting lifted both of his hands and said, Sure you will, but first allow me even the playing field. Sand style. Shukaku's playground. Frieza felt his eyes widen when the sand at the bottom of the ocean and from portals. The sand then flooded where Frieza was standing and he gasped feeling the pure energy in the sand. He was then doubled over in pain as a fist was then lodged into his gut, Naruto standing in front of him with a smirk on his face. Frieza standing up scowled and fired a key blast at Naruto, who turned into pure sand as the blast was absorbed. Frieza was then launched forward from a fist made of solid sand. He then started to bounce around the ring, as Naruto assaulted him with fist, feet, arms, fingers, hell even entire skulls. Frieza snapping into the air scowled not liking how bad he was getting beaten. He then wiping away the blood on his lips sneered and said, You meddlesome boy. I'm gonna show you what true power is with my full power. He then charged up shaking planet, ignoring how Naruto was picking his teeth with one of his kunai. When Frieza finished his transformation he had lost all of his bulk from his previous form and now looked like a very white lizard with a purple head. Naruto seeing this asked, Is that it, really? Frieza snarling launched at Naruto who formed a sand fist that smacked Frieza away with ease. Naruto popping his joints again said, I'm gonna give you a few friends to play with. He then crossing his fingers cried out, Sand clone jutsu. Everyone gained wide eyes from the very sand covering the area about 10 clones made of solid sand appeared and attacked Frieza, who started to fight them off, but was failing badly. He having enough blasted the sand clones with a powerful key blast and snarled at Naruto who had the audacity to yawn. Frieza snarling more started to release blast after blast at Naruto, who still yawning somehow had the sand block the key blast, sometimes forming a shield or just making a wall. The sand then fell down and Frieza was startled as Naruto was no longer there, hell the only thing there was a thick wall of sand. He didn't even know that Naruto was behind him, until he was pimp smacked down to the ground and wrapped in sand. Naruto landing on the ground smiled and said, Time for a throwback. Sand coffin. Frieza screamed as he was wrapped in a ton of sand and lifted into the air. Naruto then closing his fist said, Sand burial. The sand then tried to crush Frieza, who lucky for him dodged at the last moment. He with his tail being crushed sneered and said, You foolish little boy. He then charged at Naruto who remained unchanged. Naruto then started to block Frieza's attacks. Frieza being enraged by this fired a powerful death beam at Naruto, who deflected it with ease. Vegeta watching this could only marvel at Naruto's mighty power. Hell Naruto was beating Frieza like he was a runaway slave, but worse. Frieza snapping back snarled and said, You insolent little whelp do you have any idea who I am? I am Frieza the most powerful being in the universe. Naruto rolling his eyes and said, You know Vegeta said the same thing the first time I met him, now look at him. Oh well. It's time I stop playing with you and finish this little dance so I can get back to my heim. She accepted being my first wife and already wants me to give her a child. Who am I to argue? Naruto then turned into a blur and Frieza was being beat like a rag doll. Naruto landing an elbow to the tyrant's head reverted to normal and said, He's all your Goku. I have to get back to Bulma. He then vanished in a swirl of sand. He appearing back in the cave sweat drop spotting his clone standing on the ceiling trembling at the hungry look in Bulma's eyes. Naruto could also see that Bulma was only dressed in his black jacket that wasn't hiding very much. He felt his eyebrows start twitching getting memories from his clone on earth that was rutting like bunnies with Zanya. Shaking his head his dismissed the clone with Bulma and tackled her into the bed, knowing that there was work to be done. About two hours later Bulma was once again nuzzling into his chest, well a clone's chest. He was watching the battle between Goku and Frieza from a bird's eye view. Goku had just hit the freak with his spirit bomb, but the freak didn't die and killed Piccolo and Krillin. Well he killed Krillin at least. 
Piccolo thanked God was still alive as he had no idea how much work it would take to revive everyone every time something happened. He had already captured Krillin's soul so that he could revive the bald monk later. He smiled when Goku transformed into his Super Saiyan form and started beating the freak to kingdom come. He then blinked finding himself back on earth at the capsule corporation, inside of Bulma's bedroom of course. He closing his eyes returned his vision to the battle on Namek. He approved of Goku's actions, even even when the freak known as Frieza tried to get a dirty shot on him. He then witnessed Goku finding Vegeta's Saiyan pod and flee the exploding Namek. Opening his eyes he yawned and laid back down, dispelling the clone. He would wake up later to find Bulma very excited about being back on earth in her own room. Shaking his head he got up and summoned a black jacket for himself. Walking out of the building he blinked spotting all of the Namekians. Shaking his head he revived Krillin and said, You're very weak Krillin, but I plan on fixing that. Me, you, Gohan and Piccolo are going to be getting real familiar with each other. In three days Naruto's boot camp from hell begins. So if I were you I'd go and tell my girl that I'm going to be gone for a few months, maybe even a year. Krillin gulping got up and quickly ran to do so. Naruto then informed Gohan and Piccolo of their incoming torture session. Gohan was happy about it as that meant he got to learn some more skills from Naruto. Piccolo actually looked terrified for some reason. Shrugging he walked back into Bulma's home. He walking back into the room, climbed into the bed and went back to sleep. He would wake up later to hear Bulma yelling at someone about him. Sighing he got up and walked out of the room. He blinked spotting Zanya and Bulma having a very heated argument about him. He blinked hearing Bulma say, I'm his first wife, and that means I get to have his babies first. Zanya snorting said, I'm his second wife, and I think that means I get to have his babies first. Plus you're just a human woman, I'm not meaning our children will be stronger. Bulma with a sneer on her face said, Our children will be smarter, not to mention prettier. Zanya then said something nasty back. This back and forth argument continued for about five minutes when Naruto said, if you both don't stop arguing like two school children, neither one of you will be having any children from me until Goku comes back. Both women hearing this quickly stopped arguing and started to apologize to him. Naruto sighing said, apology accepted. Now both of you come to bed. I would like to sleep and cuddle with my lovely wives before I start to set up my training ground. Both females nodding happily followed him to Bulma's room and into her bed. Naruto yawning kissed both of them on the forehead and said, Good night my beautiful Heinz. Both women smiling nuzzled into him and said, Good night my darling king. Three days later and Naruto was standing before Krillin, Piccolo, and Gohan in his new training ground. It kinda looked like someone had frozen time during an epic battle as huge chunks of lands were floating in the air, and black smoke could be seen everywhere. Naruto leaning up said, Welcome you three to my personal dimension, otherwise known as the negative zone. In here I control everything, from time, to space, yes even gravity. You three will be training in here for the next three years, which outside of my dimension will be only three months. I will push the three of you to your breaking points. Hell I'll probably break the three of you at least once, but I promise you that once I'm finished with you, people like Frieza will feel like a stretch then a hard battle. Understand? Gohan not being afraid said, I understand sensei and I am ready. Krillin gulping asked, Will I be stronger? Naruto smiling said, Of course my friend. Krillin sighing said, Then I'm in. Piccolo snorting said, I'm here ain't I bring it on Mr. Godly Demon King. Naruto chuckling said, Oh I plan on a green bean. He then appeared beside Gohan and slapped the boy on the back. Instantly Gohan collided with the ground. He then did the same to Krillin and Piccolo and said, The first lesson is gravity. All three of you are now weighing gravity seals that make you feel like you weigh 16 tons. Once you can stand up, you are to transverse the platforms, while dodging fireballs from Matabi and Lava Ball's son Goku. Oh and the platforms will also be moving. So yeah. Piccolo hearing this asked, Who the hell is Matabi and son Goku? Gohan who was pale said, To Biju. Krillin hearing Gohan asked, To what? He got his answer when both Biju appeared standing beside Naruto. Gohan was pale and shaking in fear, as Matabi was licking her lips. Piccolo spotting son Goku was reminded of the transformation Saiyan go through during a full moon. 
Krillin just started to cry wondering what he had gotten himself into. Three weeks later Krillin and Gohan were sparring in the air. Gohan using the interceptor style, Krillin using the iron fist style. Piccolo was firing off several special beam cannons increasing his power with each blast. Naruto himself was trying to break past the barrier of Saiyan, trying to breach the walls of Super Saiyan. So far he hadn't got it, but he was damn close. Naruto then turning to Piccolo said, Oi Green Bean, time to train with Krillin. Piccolo nodding moved to Krillin and started to spar with him. Gohan flying over to Naruto, bowed and asked, What now Naruto sensei? Naruto smirking said, It's time to start making your own taijutsu and kenjutsu style Gohan. Now I have decided that you have now earned full access to the library of taijutsu. This also means that you'll have to study all of my battles and the battles of Uchiha Sasuke. I will also be sealing your sword on you. Can't have you loosing it anymore. Gohan nodded hearing all of this. Outside of this training ground Bulma and Zangya were cooing at Naruto and Bulma's baby girl. She had a round chubby face, tan skin and like Naruto had whisker marks on the side of her face. She had her mother's hair color but her father's hair shape. She had dark blue eyes with a slit for the middle. A small monkey tail could be seen under the little girl. She had been born two weeks ago and was named Tsunade, like Naruto's godmother. The little girl was asleep ignoring the cooing of her mother's. Bulma stopping her cooing asked, So when do you think our husband is going to get out of the training session? Zangya shrugging said, Only he knows. I do feel slightly bad for the bald one though. Being cheated on by that cheap whore. Bulma scowling said, Even if he is a pervert Krillin does deserve better than her. Master Roshi who was trying to check out both women said, Krillin is going to be fine. Now a little to the left. As expected he was quickly knocked out by both women who were glaring at him with anger. Bulma crossing her arms under her larger breast said, Watch it you filthy old pervert. Only Naruto and Zangya can check me out. Zangya nodding said, The same here pervert. Roshi with a lump on his head was crying wondering what he had to do to get a pretty young thing hanging off of him like Naruto. Just then the door opened and in stormed a pissed off Chi Chi who glaring at Bulma asked, how long does he plan on keeping my Gohan for his training? Bulma rolling her eyes said, until Gohan has mastered whatever he plans on teaching him. Chi Chi hearing this sighed and said, I'm sorry Bulma, it's just that both Goku and Gohan aren't at the house and it gets so lonely. Roshi hearing this popped up and was about to say something perverted when Bulma said, why don't you stay here then Chi Chi? That way as soon as Gohan comes out, you'll be here to tell him how much you missed him. Chi Chi smiling said, Thank you Bulma that's a wonderful idea. Zangya was about to say something when little Tsunade had an accident in her diaper. She smiling picked up Tsunade and said, I'll change this one Bulma you show Chi Chi to a room. Bulma smiling nodded and lead Chi Chi to her new room. Roshi looking around to make sure no one was watching pulled out a little orange book and started to read it. Three months later and the fighters finally appeared in the living room of the briefs estate. Krillin appearing first, looked like he had just fought the Saiyans again. The man looking at Bulma said, Your husband is a slave driver. He then passed out. Next out was Piccolo who looked like he had just fought Frieza and Goku together. He didn't say a word, as he simply hit the floor unconscious. Gohan then walked out with his sword over his shoulder and a book in front of his face. Gohan once again had his tail, but this time it was wrapped around his waist. Naruto then stepped out with a bored look on his face. He then blinked spotting Bulma holding Tsunade. Walking over to her, he gently took his daughter from her mom's arms. He nuzzling his face with her said, There's daddy's brilliant little girl. Tsunade giggled at this. Naruto laughing then kissed Bulma on the forehead and kissed Zanya. He handing Tsunade back to Bulma turned to Gohan and said, Gohan stop channeling your inner Kakashi sensei and greet your mother. Gohan putting his book away, walked over to Chi Chi and pulled her into a deep hug. Chi Chi smiling at this hugged him back and said, There's my sweet baby boy. Naruto snickered at this, as Gohan was now blushing very deeply. Gohan then cried out, Mom. I'm not just your sweet baby boy. According to Naruto sensei I'm an elite Jonin and a member of the once mighty Saiyan race. Naruto laughing said, You also happen to be your mother's sweet baby boy. Gohan glaring at Naruto said, 
Don't make me tell Kagaya sama on you, Sensei. Naruto blanched hearing this and said, Now let's not do anything hasty here. Gohan smirking now asked, What's the matter, Sensei, afraid of your mom? Naruto, with visible fear in his eyes, said, Hell yeah, I'm afraid of my mother. My mother, unlike yours, can level entire dimensions if you piss her off. Hell, I'm sure that even King Yenma would tremble in fear at just the thought of my mother being pissed off. Zangya hearing this smirked and said, Well then maybe I should inform Kagaya-sama that you haven't given me a child yet. Naruto hearing this blanched and with speed unseen scooped Zangya up in his arms. Blurring to the bedroom he could be heard saying, So we embark on the journey of life once again. Gohan hearing this started to laugh as his sensei was such a mother's boy. He blinked though when Tsunade was in his arms, a diaper bag, and a traveling case with her. Bulma running down the hall said, you're on babysitting duty Gohan. I'm going to get me some Naruto time. Gohan's sweat dropped hearing this knowing that his sensei was going to be exhausted tomorrow and maybe for the next week. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.